Hi, everyone. I'm Kenny Robertson, founder of the On Purpose Woman Global Community and founder and publisher of On Purpose Woman Magazine. I'm here to share the speaker portion of our Connections Over Coffee gathering of the On Purpose Woman Global Community. Andrea Hyland is speaking on increasing our connection to the wisdom of the grandmothers with ritual and storytelling. Andrea Hyland is the founder of Heal My Voice, working with women healing trauma, loss, and grief. She's a somatic intuitive coach and ritualist who believes that we can heal intergenerational trauma and receive more blessings than burdens from our ancestors. Andrea, you're on. <clears throat> thank you so much, Jenny, and thank you to everyone who's here today. You know, it's, it's interesting when uh, preparing a talk like this and trying to put it in a succinct 20 minutes of information and ideas. But I'll tell you that when my alarm went off this morning, I realized I was having a dream that related to this talk. So I'm going to just tell you, I had a dream last night and I was really excited to be coming back to earth. I was in some sort of a pod. So I was like falling through through the sky, but it felt, you know, it wasn't scary, but I was really excited that I was approaching the earth. And as I got closer, first, I saw this beautiful view of the earth. Oh, it just takes my breath away thinking about it, it fills me. And then as I got closer, I started flying through smoke and other people were in pods flying away. And when I arrived, I was alarmed that no one was doing anything to save the earth. No one was stepping in. And I just made it my mission to do something. And, and in the dream, I was like in different conversations with people and we were all talking about our skills and our gifts and what we could bring to making a difference. So there you go. The dream is the talk actually. So I wanted to say grandmothers have dreams like that. And when I say grandmothers, I believe that we are preparing from the moment we are born to become the grandmothers on the earth. So you can use the word elders or crones because what happens is we use the experiences that we've had throughout our whole lives to develop wisdom and guidance. And that's what ultimately we do as grandmothers and the elders. So grandmothers have dreams like that. And it's always about sounding the alarm, bringing wisdom and taking action. So I want to shine a light on ancestral lineage healing, because this is how we can access in the unseen. The first time I connected with an ancient grandmother on my father's mother's lineage, it wasn't just one grandmother, it was a whole circle of grandmothers. And they told me to call them the midwives. And in that session, they shared some of the blessings of this lineage. They told me that it was really important for community to be working together and that they were healers and that they had have a love of people and animals and nature. And they have a belief that the land is living and breathing and we are connected to it. And over several sessions, I could see the blessings from this lineage already being a part of my life and my passion. It was familiar to me. And Heal My Voice, the organization I started, came from this lineage. Knowing And knowing that brings it even more alive to me, that it wasn't just kind of a fluke or it wasn't some idea that just came out of it. It was a continuation of what my people, what my grandmothers were bringing to the world. So connecting with ancient grandmothers and grandfathers in your lineage requires a couple of things. And that's why I started with the question, because number one, it requires some sort of belief or, poss or a belief in the possibility that there's an unseen world that you can connect with. And so thinking about experiences that you've had or just a synchronicity can help you to believe even if you can't see that connection. It also requires a curiosity and an ability to imagine. 
And imagining doesn't have to be something you see or hear. It can be something you just feel. You have a sense of it. An example is a guided meditation. If you were to close your eyes and someone said, um, imagine yourself walking on a path you're going to create an image or a feeling of an image of what that path looks like, what is around you. And then if it said connect with a guide, you're, use it, you're allowing for your imagination and for pictures and images to come to you. And that's what I mean by imagine. It's an image that you allow. And then the other thing is uh, a desire to build a relationship with the unseen world. You can go and meet a guide or meet an ancestor one time and, okay, hi, happy to meet you. We had lunch. Bye. But to really develop a relationship takes some time and takes practice and takes, like any relationship with someone who you can physically touch, it, it takes time to keep building that. Well, I'm really lucky to have had two grandmothers who I loved very much. And I never lived near either of them, but during the times that I was with them, I have memories of food for some reason, even if there wasn't a lot of cooking going on, it was just food and wisdom that still impact me. Something they said, one grandmother taught me that I have the power to heal myself. She shared this on a day when I was home from school as a child, when she was visiting us and I had a cold. And she said that um, I had the power to heal myself. And I'm sure it's what led me to Louise Hay and you can heal your life. And she is on the lineage of the healers too, which I didn't even realize until I started writing some things about her. And then my other grandmother taught me about being in harmony with nature. And she had the spirit of an entrepreneur in the way that she worked with clients for my grandfather's charter boat fishing company and the way she made jewelry and useful items out of nature. She had the in, this instinct about a brand, like the way she would even sell it at a local shop. And she also taught reverence for our ancestors by taking me to the cemetery whenever I visited to meet the relatives. And, you know, we need the wisdom of the grandmothers and grandfathers. They're a part of us. They're in our blood, our bones, our DNA. We carry that wisdom. We carry all of that. So the other thing I want to say is cultivating a relationship with your ancestors doesn't take away from your relationship with God, spirit, the angels, or any other unseen forces you interact with. The difference between my angel guides and the ancient ancestors First of all, I have different guides for different things. I have guides for when I'm coaching. I have some protector guides. I have guides I call on when I'm writing. And for me, I was talking about Archangel Michael earlier in the, the Zoom room, but when I call on him, I feel the power of his protection and that he's a trusted friend and guide. My relationship with him has grown over the decades and I have called on him during some of the lowest lows of my life when I felt the most scared when I felt hopeless and he I've always felt him there and felt his love and I I just I love him deeply and I'm I know that some of you also have that relationship with Archangel Michael he is available to all of us but the difference to me between calling on the strength of Archangel Michael and the strength of my ancestors is that when I connect with my older ancestors, I have a connection of knowing myself. I see the gifts, blessings, and skills that I carry in my body and bones, and I see the different ways our skills manifest in expression. As I go, grow closer to my ancestors, I grow closer to myself. They help me remember my purpose and help me see how I'm already expressing that, how I've already been carrying that forth in the world. Now, why I focus on the ancient or older ancestors, because you'll hear me say that, you know, older ancestors, I'm talking about like further down on the line, the ones who aren't on the genealogy chart, chances are. 
And when we talk about ancestors, the most natural thing is that we want to reach out to the remembered dead. We have a memory of who they are, a, a parent, a grandparent, a great grandparent. And it feels like we can touch them and they can reach us. We have a name, we have memories. Well, contacting the remembered dead is a mixed bag of sweet memories and gunk. So as an example, I had a close relationship with my grandfather, Phil, the writer and fisherman who I was talking with about a little bit. I loved his letters and stories. I still have letters that he wrote to me as a child. And the memories I have of going into my grandparents' home on Cape Cod is filled with the smell of mothballs, frying fish, Tipperello cigars and whiskey, Coca-Cola and body odor. And my grandfather had a Playboy calendar of nude women on the wall by the kitchen table that we would all see as we were sitting and eating our food. And, you know, and there were also books and papers and a typewriter scattered all around his office and the living room. I mean, he was always so interesting and sometimes scary and I loved him deeply. And so I have called on him at times in my life and reading his letters and all. But when I connect with him, I remember his stories, his artistic, imaginative self. And I also remember the alcohol and the pain. I remember how special I felt with him, and I remember his woundedness. I remember who he was as a human being, and that woundedness is also in his letters. But when I connect with the ancient or older ancestors, I have no stories about them. I have, there are no memories, good or bad. There are no highs or lows. It's a pure connection that I have with them. And I can experience, and I have experienced, this unconditional love of a grandparent and listen to their grounded wisdom. Their words of, oh, dear granddaughter, you are the gift. You know, that kind of like just pure energy. It's the ultimate unconditional love without wounds or trauma. And I connect with their spirit and they're here with me. So if a grandparent or a parent is in a gathering with older ancestors, I say hello to them. I tell them that I love them. And then um, I turn my attention to the older wise ones. And so if I want to talk to an ancestor about my mother or siblings or children who are living, I reach to the older ones because I have no memories and it can just be a pure interaction. So here's a couple of things I, I want to suggest about ways to connect with these ancient ancestors and to draw on this wisdom that's already, as I said, in your bones and blood and your DNA. A first step is to connect with ancient ones. And I'll say it as well ancestors because none of us really know who's troubled or who is unhealed in the ancestor realm or in the spirit realm. So calling on well ancestors and then start exploring how you want to do that. You know, go past the remembered dead, go to the root of your ancestry to find those blessings. So a couple of ways, one is to schedule sessions with me or another lineage practitioner. And I do have a special I'll put in the, in the group later for that. You can also read books and listen to podcasts. And I love it that Mary Perry just held up the book that she's in. Mary, if you can hold that up, because um, Amy Gillespie Dougherty has gathered authors to do these series of books, The Ancestors Within, the anthology series. I was actually going to put the Amazon link in there. And I don't know if people can contact you directly, Mary, for um for books, but one of the things I love about that book is how it just has so many examples of how people have connected with ancestors and there's so many different tools. There are three books out right now and I thought it's really great to get different perspectives on how to um, work with the ancestors. So those are, so I've put that there. And then Ancestral Summits, The Shift Network, has um, at least one every year. Maybe they have more now, but there are different speakers who speak about ancestral things. 
So it's a great way to just start to think about how would you like to contact or make connection with an ancestor. And two tips I want to say about that is to really practice ritual safety. And you don't always hear this on the summits because they've got a short amount of time to tell you something about it. But two things, always connect with a, some sort of protector guide and just ask for a boundary to go around you. And then ask if you're going to contact ancestors for the well ancestors to come forward. So if you have a boundary around you of protection, just like, you know, looking through the peephole of the door before you open the door up in your house or, you know, keeping the chain on the lock a little bit like, and who are you? And are you an ancestor? You know, just asking and having um, that kind of ritual safety. But the second step is that to make a list of some of the blessings, skills, and talents, and natural abilities that you have. And if you have family who you can see that this is part of the lineage, that's, that's an extra thing that's there. But for right now, just recognize that those natural abilities that you have, those things that you are drawn to, even things like history that is interesting to you or music that begin by making a list of those things because I will guarantee 99% because I don't know everything, but I will say that those things that are your natural abilities came through your ancestors. And so I would encourage you to write your stories from your lived wisdom and feel the connection even in the writing of the stories how that is connected to your ancestry line somewhere along the way um you know i wrote a a, a story not too long ago about leadership and it, it came out of i was the captain of the show flags in the marching band in high school and i was supposed to start being the captain in september and in may the previous captain couldn't be at a parade and I was just thrust into leadership. And I made so many mistakes on that day that I really learned from. So I wrote the article about mistakes I made in leadership and what I learned and how I course corrected. It wasn't a you should do this type of story. It was an experience and things I learned and choices I made. And to me, that's what I've always looked for for you know growing up was like where's that mentor where's that grandmother who has unconditional love or grandfather who is saying oh come here yes i you know who would listen to me or who could share those stories not as a telling me what to do but as a you know here's something i learned about leadership type of a thing we also carry burdens from our ancestors that we might mistake as our own and you know there's a lot out there now about epigenetics and what is carried through and an example of that would be you had a great 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 grandfather who was in a war and had ptsd and that ptsd is something you're experiencing now and you don't know where it came from because you weren't in a war but it came through the the lineage and so when you start to also look at the burdens that are part of your lineage then you can also start to look at burdens that you've lifted but also to take on is this mine or is this someone else's so writing stories about burdens which in many ways that's what heal my voice was we were writing stories about trauma loss and grief and things we learned and ways that we moved through that so that's another way of putting your wisdom into the world but also and also healing and then there are a couple of other things I'll just suggest. One is creating an altar. And it could be something simple. It could be a space that's designated on your desk where you have a candle and you light the candle and you say, this is in honor of my ancestors. It can be as simple as that, just honoring the ancestors. Or maybe you bring fresh flowers into the house and you have a designated spot and you say this is I'm bringing this beauty in for my ancestors you're just beginning to presence that idea that they're there and that and the honoring of them 
at another time with people who have different beliefs, it might have been going to the cemetery to clean off the gravestone as just a way of honoring, you know, but creating an altar. I actually have um, a little altar shrine that I carry with me because I travel to different places. I don't have my own home. And I just got this little box and I put, um, whenever I've worked with an ancestry line, I've al always had like a rock that I've designated to be a symbol of that ancestry. And then along the way, I've put things on this little altar space, like a pine cone that I found or a word that uh, a little, actually I have this rock says, delight in the day. So one day I put it on the altar just as a thanking, thanking them. Again, it's just presencing I want connection with my ancestors. I call in the well ancestors and beginning to work with them. And then one one other way, you know, let's talk about food. It, it's pretty common for people to hear either you have this or you've heard someone else that they have a recipe that's handed down through the family. It might be a cookie recipe that you bake um, in December or it could be something connected with a holiday or a celebration. I remember uh, when my kids were growing up, I had, we had ethnic food nights and we would always celebrate different cultures and there would always be, but we'd ha have people come and we'd research food, earth honoring rituals, music, art games, clothing rituals. And so the idea of celebrating a culture you know, lineage of place, lineage of culture, not as an appropriation of someone else's culture. It's not that at all. It's about um, honoring what is the culture. You know, Liza is in Ireland now. I mean, maybe actually maybe you were drawn there because of your ancestors, but also learning a little bit about what is what's on the land and what are the spirits that are there? What are some of the traditions is a way of just honoring culture that that's there. And I'll just say again, I do believe that we begin our training as grandmothers and elders decades earlier. And that the experiences, thanks, Jenny, we have is um, what brings us. So I'm going to read this one quote, and then I, I will stop and thanks for listening to me but this quote is from phil cousineau who wrote it in an article called soulfulness is a verb soul is in the voice or in another venerable tradition the fingertips according to the craftsmen of the middle ages that's why we have spiral patterns on our fingertips they thought the whorls there are the marks left by the soul entering or leaving the body in this imaginative way of thinking, we infuse the people and things we touch in the world with soul by the care and attention of our touch. Our soul emerges from this mysterious place inside us and out through our fingertips and souling the world we carve, the gardens we cultivate, the children and animals and lovers we touch. To me, this is a poetic way of imagining how we bring soul back into our lives by paying attention to the very way we touch, as with the way we prepared food or the care we give our work or the manner in which we touch the earth. And to me, this comes the ancestors coming through us and here we are on the earth. All right, I'm complete. Thanks everyone. Andrea, thank you. I'd love for everyone to unmute yourself and let's give Andrea a big round of applause that she can hear. Are you all ready? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you awesome. Andrea. Awesome job. I love that. I love that, um, what you just read. Mm -hmm. And thank you so much for that and for all your wisdom and for the work that you do. And I have had one session with Andrea and I'm looking forward to another one. There were some interesting, not really surprises, but just revelations that I'm really grateful to have um, really have a greater understanding of. And I want to thank anyone else who is watching this live or the replay. If you'd like to join us for one of our 11 free Zoom gatherings a month or an in-person in Richmond, Virginia or Charlottesville, Virginia, comment below and I'll let you know how to do that. You can also go to the website, 
on opwgc.com. And that will also be in the comments and find out all about our community. Thank you so much.